Hello, thank you for joining us today. Entrepreneurs in Christ consists of a tribe of marketplace ministers doing business with godly values and with an emphasis on marketplace ministry. We are confident you did not stumble upon this page by chance, but we believe God divinely orchestrated this moment and you were handpicked to hear this message. We implore you to sit back and feed your spirit with the undiluted word of God, which is able to build you up as an effective kingdom entrepreneur and marketplace minister. We ask that you subscribe to this page as we release fresh content that will confirm your faith and convictions to maintain a righteous stand with God on a weekly basis. Also, please do like this video, click on the like button, share with a friend, share with a family member and leave a comment or question below where necessary. Thank you and God bless you. Bye. A corporate gathering provides the opportunity to express our love for God. But there is something else that happens. You can climb, you can ascend higher, you can ascend faster. There is a reason why Christians don't grow in their walk with the Spirit of God. We don't know the ways of God. We like His acts, we don't know His ways. When you begin to walk with the Spirit of God, He begins to pull you deeper. He begins to reveal to you His ways. It is His ways that you want. It's not okay for you to be a church attendee, to go to church every Sunday and every midweek service. At some point in that journey in your life, there will be a void. I began to understand that Africans, we have a, a need for position, for titles. We love authority. All of those things take away from the true context of your walk with God. It does. You can see an average Nigerian go to church three, four times a week. And this person will stay in church on Sunday till 5 p.m. They will get to church at 8 in the morning. They will stay till 5 p.m. But when you check the quality of their work with the Spirit of God, it is very low very low they have no knowledge of god so you now begin to wonder what has filled the time when they go to church eight in the morning come back home four five p.m i know because i lived that life as a young boy my mother going to church are we just jumping from meetings to meetings in the name of serving God, what does it mean to serve God? My friends, I render to you that you begin to serve God when you know His ways. You cannot serve God without adequate knowledge of His ways. This is a pain in my heart. Everywhere you see Christians jumping from one activity to the other activity. But when you check their lives, the quality of their work with the Spirit of God, nothing tangible can be held unto.
God takes you serious when you begin to take God serious. He's gentle, like a dove. He won't go beyond his boundaries in your life. He doesn't. You may have a call of God upon your life. But if you're not longing to be filled, to go beyond just the acts, to step into his ways, You see, for everything you do in church, you can be replaced. You can be replaced. One day a friend texted me. He had the displeasure of going for his previous boss's funeral. And as the time the man passed, he was his manager at work. He went for the funeral, came back, and he was in utter disbelief and shock. How swiftly and how quickly the company replaced him. Because the company has money to make. So they replaced him. And he began to see the vanity in life. The big office was gone. The position, the title, all of that was gone. At some point in our lives, we have to take inventory and find out what all the activity really is about. We have to. Are we just doing what we do because we love titles, positions, the busyness of being busy. Are we actually doing these things because we love God and we are trying to know his ways? The Bible says he made known his ways. His ways can be made known to Moses. So what is it that was different about Moses? It was a human being like them. Two sets of eyes, two sets of ears, one nose, one mouth. They look like them. Why would God disclose his ways to one person and his acts only? To the children of Israel? Is it because they were a crowd and Moses one person? What could have been the problem? Did one man decide to go further? Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. This class is proof of our commitment to draw closer to God. When you want to draw closer to God, Knowledge is important.
revealed knowledge given by somebody else. In this class, you watch knowledge being revealed. That knowledge is designed to bring you closer to knowledge that you will get for yourself. Mm -hmm. The point of knowledge is to reveal. But I'm telling you that every man has a unique walk with God. Every man, every woman. And knowledge is like a rope that gets you closer to the pool of knowledge. But there is a greater responsibility, not just in listening to the class. But there's something called thirsting. Being hungry for the Spirit of God. It is those who thirst that will be filled. If a child is not hungry and you place the best of meals in front of that child, they will not eat. It's eat when they are hungry. But it's dependent on knowledge. You have to be very strategic to use the knowledge being revealed to climb into the pool of knowledge that God has customized for you. This is how God makes known his ways to you. But all of that's to say that if you're not thirsty, if you're not hungry, God won't go beyond your thirst, beyond your hunger. He won't. Sometimes the Spirit of God begins to explain the ways of God to me. Knowledge in God's kingdom is powerful. And there are systems of bodies of knowledge that you need to grow beyond being a Sunday Christian that goes to church at 8 in the morning, comes back at 5 p.m. But when we check and index the quality of their spiritual life, that quality is very low. You've done that for 20 years and yet you've not grown. What could be the problem? The only thing that can break mindsets is knowledge. You know, our parents have a mindset. There are many of our parents that will never speak in tongues because they are Catholic, Anglican, Baptist. They were thought in a particular way. That knowledge crystallized in them in a particular way. They boxed God in a corner in their heart. And God became to them what they believed. Because the Bible says, be it according to your faith. Be it unto you. It's according to your faith. If you believe God does not perform miracles, he does not perform miracles for you. If you believe God performs miracles, you will begin to see miracles in your life. Knowledge. The difference between a Sunday Christian that goes to church and when you check the quality of their life after 20 years, with all the activity and all the titles and all the positions, is knowledge. How thirsty are you for knowledge? And so the Spirit of God came and said, as scripture says, your word, is a light unto my path. 
and a lamp unto my feet. Because the entrance of his word, the entrance of the knowledge of God brings light into your heart. Light will enter you if his word enters you. How we gauge the quality of any Christian's life is indexed by the amount of light they possess and they have accessed. If you like, spend every day in church, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you have not accessed light, okay. Anyways. He said the entrance of God's word brings light. The entrance. It has to enter you. So I began to ask him, how does the word enter a person? It's not the hearing that brings light. The hearing brings faith. It is the entrance that brings light. Oh, there is a light you need for your next level. Where you are in life correlates directly to the equivalence of light you've accessed. This is the Spirit of God. That's what he told me. You see us in church. We dance to the praise and worship. We shout amen when the pastor prays. But when you check us and you check the quality of light that has entered us, not the one that we have heard, it's very low. It's very, very low. The entrance. That's why some activities hurt the body of Christ more and it edifies the body of Christ. When you look at what they are doing, there is very little knowledge entering them in a corporate sense. And your light will always correspond to the amount of light you've accessed. You cannot go beyond the light you've accessed. You can't. It's impossible. If you want to access his ways, his knowledge is what pushes you closer into the pool of light. His knowledge. His knowledge. What do you know about God that has changed the quality of your life? What do you know? What do you know? And so he said to me, the entrance of your word is what brings light onto my path and a lamp onto my feet. And so I asked him, what is the difference? What is the difference? There's a pathway. My feet has to walk in that pathway. Is it not true that I need this light for my pathway? The pathway to destiny. The pathway to the kingdom of God. The pathway to the bank of resources that God has domiciled for life and godliness in his kingdom. There's a pathway you have to walk. And it's the entrance of God's word that brings that light. I'm saying it again, it's not the hearing. Hear all the apostles in the world. If the word does not enter you, you have no light.
they have no light because they achieve different things the hearing brings faith it's the entrance that brings light it began to explode in my mind it began to explode and when he does that i get excited i began to have conversations with the spirit of god because that is how he made known his ways to moses don't ever be satisfied with his acts christians shout amen amen everywhere and we are shouting amen till we are 20 years older and the quality of light we have access is so low oh it aches the heart of god I said god there are two things you must explain to me because I've chosen like Moses to go further with you I want to access knowledge that brings me to your ways I don't want your acts He said there are two things I said teach me how your words enter into a man This is the one that brings light If my eyes will see it's because your word has entered me Oh my god I was teaching the seminar yesterday and I was just reflecting and I realized that whenever I place my eyes on a person light begins to speak sometimes I just hear their voice and I access light about their life it's like a fire brought to me in the spirit if your eye is single then your whole body will be full of light there are provisions in god's word that brings us light instead of us looking at that we prefer to go to church to dance and and spend time till 5 p.m. but i digress If you're a man on this call, let your eye be single. Don't chase every woman looking around the whole place. You will never possess like that way. Put your eyes in your house. The one that you have married, let her become beautiful before you. If your whole eyes be single, then your whole body will be full of light. But ask him. Tell me how light permeates the heart of a man. And he gave me a picture. You understand what it means to get a woman pregnant? You have two kids. I say yes, sir. that seed entered that woman and she received it something happened that your visible eyes could not see but soon the evidence began to play out her stomach began to protrude a seed was received My friend is no different. If light has entered you you are pregnant. But this time it is not that you are a woman that has a womb. When the word of God has intercourse with a man, a woman in your spirit man, it can become one with you. But there is a womb in your mind. your mind possesses a womb is it not true we call the intelligent ideas of a man the brain child of that man so there is a womb in your mind and your mind can capture a seed and god's word is a seed it can enter you you can catch it like a woman will catch seed 
Ma. You can catch it. I repeat, it is not the hearing of the word that brings light. It is the entrance. It has to enter you. It's the same word that everybody has. The same Bible. Your own Bible and my Bible, if you bring them side by side, it's the same thing. How come some people have accessed some dimensions of light? Don't waste your time listening to the best of the apostles. Waste your time not in going to church and staying till 5 p.m. and doing all the activities in church. Spend your time having God's word enter you. Then light will come into your mind. Illumination. And according to the Bible, this is the illumination you need for your pathway, the pathway of destiny. There are so many of us going around destiny, going about life so blind, we can't see, but yet we are walking, we are running, we are, we are strolling, we are pacing, and we have access to no light for our destiny, zero. Zero light. Because the hearing of faith is not the same thing as the entrance of light. Your life will only be equivalent to the degree to which you have accessed light. Is it not true that those in the world access dimensions and darkness and we see the repercussion? You choose. Like Joshua said to his household, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You can choose between light and darkness. If you choose light, spend it to make sure it enters your mind. And then you keep your eyes in your house. Because if your eye is good, if it is single, your whole body will be full of light. Oh, the other day I woke up and I began to have a pain in my leg. A pain. An unusual pain. It was an attack. I said, God can't deny himself. My whole body has to be full of light. It can flush out the darkness in my body. It can flush it out. And so I asked him in this conversation, I understand that this light that enters me is what is used to illuminate my pathway, the pathway of destiny. I can access light for every dimension of my life, for marriage, for business, for finances. There is a light that I can catch from the scriptures to illuminate my pathway. But what about the lamp onto my feet? My feet is on the same pathway. So why do I need a lamp when there is a light to illuminate my pathway? He said, ah, now you want to know my ways. You want to know my ways. He 
He said to me, your pathway belongs to you. But your feet can stroll to somebody else's life. In your interactions, even in business, in the places you go to, and you need something to illuminate what's happening around you, a dimension of light temporarily. Is it or caught you that a lamp illuminates temporarily? A lamp is always filled with oil. If you grew up in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, you're familiar with lanterns. Back in those days, you know, we used to have lanterns. You put some kind of, I think it's kerosene, and a wick. It will burn until the kerosene finishes or until the wick is dispensed. It has a lifespan. If you ever left the pathway and you strolled out to somebody and helped somebody else, or you travel somewhere, you there is a lamp. A lamp. That lamp can search because the Bible says the spirit of man is the candlestick of God. And he uses that thing to search the inward parts of the death. Oh, he can search. He can search. You just don't know he can search. Your spirit can be illuminated. And God will begin to use you to search. Is that not how the gift of the sending of spirits works? It's a lamp onto my feet. So your feet has to go places for God. And when your feet is shod with the gospel of peace, and you go to different regions, you need a lamp. A lamp. Because now the affairs you are handling do not pertain to your life only, it pertains to the life of others. I want you to be so thirsty for his ways. And so I am glad for the hallelujah challenge. But I want to know the light that man accessed to bring about such a change in the ideas he has about God. When you tune in to watch him, you're seeing his acts. What about his words? Let's not spend our time going to church and filling our calendar with so much activity. And when all is said and done and we gauge the quality of light emanating from your spirit man, it is so low, it cannot power even a toilet, how much more a house. Because no man lights a lamp and places it under a bushel. There are degrees and dimensions that you will access in light. That God will have to beckon on people to come and listen to you. Oh yeah. You know, somebody sent me a dream the other day. In this dream. In North America. Something happened. Prior to the dream, I had been praying a particular prayer point that God had me on. In the US, some false prophets have risen up and they have captured the minds of the youth. And in this dream, this person said I was in the room and a bunch of these false prophets came in they are well-known, they are very popular on YouTube. And the leader began to accost me 
saying that I'm um, taking away his customers. And we got into an argument. Back and forth. And I was holding my ground when she woke up. And I smiled. I know what it meant. You see, there are dimensions and light that when you begin to access it, a territorial lampstand begins to arise. And all that the devil can do is to cover it up. But he forgets that God rules in the affairs of men. And the word of God is supreme. No man lights a candle and places it under a bushel. Imagine you put on the lamp and you put it under your bed. He said, no, it has to be brought out so that it gives light. It gives light to the, to the whole house. It's your light so shine that they may see the good works of your father, which is in heaven. You see, when God begins to introduce you to his ways it's because you found ropes to climb mm -hmm. and you climbed into the well whereby he began to form and crystallize his ways within you within your spirit man you began to have fellowship because the word of god can do that it is alive one day my wife asked me I notice that you spend more time when praying listening to your own messages you spend more time you know before then i used to spend more time listening to my spiritual father, Apostle Laramie. I was the man of God that God used to light me up. But then he had me in a season whereby he just had me listening to my own messages, man. So I asked him why. He took away the appetite for other messages for a season. That's when he explained this thing to me. My word must enter your mind like a woman catches seed. That's only when light can come out. That's when the light will come out. No matter how a woman tries to hide a protruding stomach. Oh, it's too late. They don't make caftans and gowns that can hide an eight-month pregnancy. I've seen the best of them do it when they come to the U.S. to give, the, give birth to their child in the U.S. But if you look well and you're a keen observer like I am, you would know this woman is pregnant. She's carrying child. Can you become pregnant with light? Whatever you have to do for that light to enter your mind so that you can catch the seed because God's seed is his word. This is his word. Let's be done with this mindset of going around the whole place. Asking for one man of God to pray for you and lay hands. As nice as it is, you have relegated yourself to his acts. There are deeper things. There are more important things. They are called his ways. 
Now, whatever you have to do to make his word enter you as light, that's what you have to do. Anything you hear in this class is a rope to help you climb higher, to ascend higher. Because the Bible says they go from strength to strength till each man appears before God in Zion. And when you begin to climb higher, there is a pool of light that you can dive into and take a swim. And you can drink your fear until this word begins to beam out of your spirit, to beam into your soul. And it beams from your soul to your body. And the Bible says, if your eye is good, then your whole body will be full of light. Your whole body. Your whole body will be full of light. I used to think that the anointing, the healing anointing could not be used for yourself. Because every anointing God gives you is for others. The primary word is for others. He gave me an instruction. He said, take your hand. Put it by that place where your leg is aching you. And I began to see that light was entering. Listen. The next day I woke up springing like a young boy. Because God cannot deny his word. If that word enters you. And your eye is good. Your eye is single. It will go from your spirit. It will permeate your mind, your soul, all the layers of your soul. Your body will have to be full of light. When you're a walking compendium of light, no man can light you and put you under a bushel. No, it's not done. It's not done. It's not done. The dimension will have to come. Whereby God, God, will do what his word says. Hey friends, I don't know who this word is for, but I want you to know that this is the season to draw close to God. This is the season to fill your mind with light. There are dimensions of light yet on top. And don't forget, you cannot live a quality of life beyond the light you have accessed. You can't, it's impossible. It's like a woman caring for an imaginary baby that does not exist. She never caught seed and she never birthed a child. That's how it is in the spirit. What you catch is what you will birth. The matter of time. So I challenge you, my friends. I challenge you. When we gather like this, it is a feast of light. A feast. A feast of light. And how you climb higher in the spirit is when you open your mouth to accept. Then you will go back to bed and you realize that something happened. Something transpired in your spirit. That's how things will begin to explode. Because guess what? The level through which we ascend to as a group when we begin to pray. That is the level that you would have had to go to bed through. Is it not true that for some of us it's already almost 7 p.m. in your country? Where you are. So, my friends, in one minute, I want you to cry out for the living God. This is a feast of light, a feast of light. And say, Father, 
I want to catch your word. I want your word to enter my spirit, enter my mind. I want to conceive because your word has entered me. Begin to open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, let your word enter me. Let your word enter me. I want to catch it. I want to catch it. Kalavante sheke praso kutumbrada, sheke prasa kambra da da ve, zema danta li kambra da da ve ketumbrada, zeki pranta li se kambra da da vota, she kambra da da ve sa kambra danta la se, she kambra da da vo kala se, she dem prada ko prada da ve, she labanta li fe kambra da da vo sa, she ki pranta li sam prada da vo. Let your light permit every heart, every soul that is hungry for light. Let your word become a light onto their pathway, a lamp onto their feet, O God. Our spirits are hungry for your light, the undiluted word of God, the true light the light of every man that comes into this world. Yes, Lord. Would you make known your ways, O God? Make known your ways. Make known your ways. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you have been tremendously blessed by this message. You can help us spread the message of Marketplace Ministry by sending the link to this message and sharing it with just one friend or family member. As a tribe of Marketplace Ministers, our goal is to focus on building kingdom entrepreneurs with kingdom truths that can transform their lives and destinies. Finally, we don't collect offerings at Entrepreneurs in Christ. But if you would like to sow a seed into this project, you can do so via World Remit or PayPal, or you can request our account details in specific countries. Thank you again, and God bless your every move. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. God bless you. Bye.